Okay, if you can, here was another question uh, in topic 3.4. We're looking at the properties of a main sequence star called CAD. Uh, we know the luminosity of CAD in terms of the luminosity of the star. Uh, we want to uh, find the mass of CAD, uh, and we're told that it's 17 times the mass of the sun, so we're going to have to relate the luminosity of CAD to the mass of CAD, all in terms of the, uh, uh, the sun, luminosity and mass. Uh, the clue remaining is that we're supposed to assume that the exponent n in the mass luminosity relationship is 3.5. So when they say that, what they're talking about is this relationship that the luminosity of a star is proportional to its mass to the third power or fourth power, somewhere in that range. And in the question, they tell us to assume that it's exactly three and a half. That's going to help us because it's going to allow us to say things like the luminosity of the sun then should be equal to its mass to the three and a half power times some proportionality constant to turn that uh, to that to turn that proportionality into an equation. We can say at the same time then that if we take the luminosity of CAD, uh, its mass to the three and a half power has to be multiplied by that same proportionality constant k. Uh, and what we can do from here is divide one side by the other. Because there are uh, equations, this side is equal to that side. Dividing ls by lk and dividing kms divided by kmk uh, is doing the same thing to both sides. When we do that division, k cancels. Uh, and we get to say that uh, ls on lk is ms on m to the 3.5 power. We'll take that over here now. Uh, we know the luminosity of CAD in terms of the luminosity of the sun, so we can make that substitution. Which allows us to cancel the luminosity of the sun. We don't need to know what it is. Uh, the last thing we're going to do is uh, take the 3.5 root of both sides so that we can solve for the mass of CAD. So that's going to be 1 on the 3.5 root of 2 times 10 to the 4th equals ms on mk. Solving for the mass of CAD, that's going to be uh, the 3.5 root of 2 times 10 to the 4th times the mass of the sun. Uh, so you'll have to punch that into your calculator. You'll have to learn how to do these kinds of uh, arbitrary roots on your calculator. Um, but when you do that, you should get 16.9 times the mass of the sun. The next question says to outline the likely evolution of CAD after it leaves the main sequence. Uh, so the first thing we might want to recognize here is that uh, as a main sequence star that's 17 times more massive than the sun, CAD lies in the far upper left of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. And uh, what that means is that CAD is going to become a red supergiant uh, once it starts entering the next phase of its life. Following that, it's uh, going to follow the normal progression for red supergiants. Uh, it will uh, go supernova. Uh, and then a neutron star. 
It's not quite large enough to become a black hole. It needs to have about 40 solar masses, I believe, uh, to become uh, a black hole. Um, but uh, that's not something that you'd be required to know. You just need to know that very large stars become red supergiants. Red supergiants uh, go supernova, and supernova become neutron stars or black holes. To differentiate between whether or not it would be a neutron star or black hole, you would have to know what the mass of the core of that red supergiant was so that you could apply the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit, uh, which we don't have that information for Fab. Uh, so what we could say is that it will become a neutron star or a black hole.